Hi, welcome to Engineering, and today I'm going to teach you how to do the weld group design on Procon. So you'll go to your steel tab in Procon and you'll select Weld GR, which is your weld group design. This interface should open up for your weld, uh, where you'll see the diagram that shows your weld, as well as your input table and your weld input. So we're going to start with the input table, where we're going to say it's a linear method of analysis. And then we're going to take our weld metal ultimate strength. This is the strength of the weld metal itself. We're going to change it to 450. Then we have the ultimate strength and the yield strength of both for our parent um, metal. So we're going to make the first one 420. And the second one we're going to make 350. Now we also have to uh, make our applied force, so this is our YRS force, it's the ultimate limit state force that acts on the weld, so it's your total force. Yeah, all the forces that were acting on this weld is represented by this one force. So we are going to make it 150 kN, and then we need to also change its angle. At the moment it's a 45 degree angle. Uh, on, it's basically represented on the Cartesian plane, so directly right will be zero, if I can show that to you. Uh, while upwards will be 90 degrees, uh, and if you want downwards, maybe 270 degrees. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make it at a 135 degree angle. So you'll see that your force is applied at the point. So this is where our force is acting at the moment, right on the origin, at the zero, zero point. But we can change this. We can tell the program where the force is acting, if it's acting at the distance from the origin. So at the moment, it's 150 and 60. So that's my horizontal force position and vertical force position. So to change this, I'm going to make it 200 millimeters and 100 millimeters. Now you'll see when I actually start making the weld group design, this will be relative to the middle of the weld group design, the absolute middle. So I'll show you these values a little bit later, but let's go on to making the shape. So before we start any of the shapes, we should identify the size of the weld, the thickness of it. So I'm going to make it six millimeters. Now, in the code, we have an option of a plus, L, A, B, and C. So, plus basically just identifies a coordinate, or it identifies a new part of the world. Well, L is for line, A is for an arch, B is for bearing, and C is for circle. So, we're going to start with the plus, uh, and I'm going to make it 0, 0. So, that's where it's going to start. Now, let's say I wanted to go up 100 millimeters. Then I would say my Y value would be 100 in the next row. Now, you'll see that uh, that is our origin. That's our 0, 0. And our weld has gone 100 millimeters upwards. Now, if I would say I wanted to make it go to the right uh, by 50 millimeters, for example, then I'd make it a positive 50. Now you can see it's gone up, and from the last point, it continues the weld. Uh, just for another example, I would make it want to go down, let's say 50 millimeters as well. Then I'd make it a negative to go down. So basically, downwards is negative and the left is negative, while upwards is positive and right is positive. So now you see it's gone up 100 to the side 50 and down minus 50. Uh, but now let's say I wanted to make it go in a different direction or in a new shape. And what I'll do is I'll start the plus again. And let's say I want this weld to start uh, 20 millimeters to the side of this one, but to the left side. What I'll do is I'll say it's x will be 20 while it's Y will still be zero because it's still going to be level. So now I've started my new member. All right, so now we're going to try and use or we'll make a new shape. Uh, I'm going to start it at minus 50. It's going to be minus 50 from there, so it's going to be to the left. 
uh, and it's still going to be zero because it's still going to be level with the origin. Now, what I can do is I can use my line function. So there's my line function, and I can say it's length and it's angle. So in L, it's not the x and the y, but it's the radius, or the, the, actually the x and the angle, the length and the angle. So I'm going to make it 150 millimeters long, but I'm going to make it in a 135 degree angle. Now you see it's 150 millimeters long, and it's a 135 degree angle. All right. Now to show you the next part, we can use the arch. So the arch um, is again you can determine the radius, and you also determine the angle. But this angle means how much of the arch you're showing. So uh, 90 degrees will be a quarter of a circle, while 180 degrees will be half a circle. That'll be your arch. So let's make it a hundred millimeter radius, and then we're going to make it half a circle. Now you'll see, as in every other part of the weld system, uh, it starts at the last point I've made. So once I press enter, you'll see I got a hundred uh, millimeter radius weld that is um, only a hundred eighty degrees of the circle is being shown. So that's what the arch does. Then we have the bearing. So the bearing basically determines in what angle it's going to be moving. Or to the next object will be heading. So if we make it 90 degrees, and then we make an arch again of let's say 50 millimeters, and nine, only half or a quarter of a circle. Then you'll see instead of stop, uh, going in a direction sort of like that, to uh, an anti-clockwise direction, it's now gone and moved or shifted 90 degrees. So let's say if I had to remove this, uh, how you can remove this is you can go to line functions by right clicking and you can delete line. You can also insert line later. And I press enter. Now you see it does what we expected it to do, uh, 90 degrees in that direction. Okay, now for our last part, we can add a circle. But I want to add a circle onto that point over there. So we can select this row. We can go right click, line function, and we can say insert line. Now what we've done is we've made a new row, but this row will uh, occur after the last point made on the previous shape, which is that point over there. Because it's before the plus that added the new shape of the world. So what I'll do is I'll select C, and then all I have to do is say what the radius of my circle will be, in this case 25 millimeters, and you'll see that the center will be on the last point over there. So that's how we can do that. And then just for a last part, uh, you can also manually add a part using one of these uh, shapes selected here. Yeah. For example, if I wanted to add parallel lines, then I could say, uh, I can maybe determine so a few of the attributes or put in a few different parameters and I can say add to input and you'll see that it will be added to my last point and in this case it's parallel lines so it will add another point. Right, so now that we've uh, made the shapes, now I just want to show you again the force. So that is the middle of our shape group and from there our force is now 200 millimeters to the right of our uh, center of our shape and it's 100 millimeters above it. If I had to change this value to let's say 200 as well, then you'll see the force grows higher. Uh, if I made this a bit smaller, let's say 50 millimeters, you'll see it's about 50 millimeters away from that point. So it's much less now. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna analyze the shape. It's a very impractical shape, but it's just to show you guys how it works. So we'll go to our design, we'll see how the force sort of acts on the weld. Uh, you can, it's shown here by kilometers per meter. Um, so it's basically the moments acting on this due to the force. You'll see those are the inter weld values and those are our designed weld values. So we'll go to our calc sheet. Uh, we should do the calculations to show us all the inputs we already put in 
I'll show you a few of the calculations. Uh, so at the moment, the capacity, the largest force on part of the weld, etc. And basically, it will say the maximum resistance of the weld group is 300 kilonewton. And then you see the applied ER is force is 150 kilonewton. So our maximum resistance is higher than our applied, which means the weld is safe, which is very important. And that's what you actually want to determine. All right. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it helped you a lot. Uh, please like and subscribe and ask us if there's anything you want us to add to these videos. Thank you.